Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Environmental Sciences, video 35. It's on the loss of biodiversity. Way up in northern Norway is the Svalbard uh, Peninsula, and on there, scientists built a giant seed vault. It's protecting the seeds of humanity, our crop seeds, into the future. They chose to put it there because it's protected against tectonic activities. It's really, really cold. Uh, and also, as the sea levels rise, it's going to be protected as well. The idea was hundreds or thousands of years into the future, we could go there and grab seeds and then start growing those, uh, those crops again. Unfortunately, we've already had to make withdrawals from that area. And the reason why is the war in Syria put a lot of these drought-resistant crops at risk. And so they've had to take more seeds out and they've moved those to Lebanon. But it does kind of get at this idea of the importance of biodiversity. Biodiversity is not only species diversity, but it can be genes, species, especially uh, our domesticated crops and livestock, and then ecosystems themselves. And they have value. They give us our resources, and they also do these ecosystem services. And they're at risk. We're seeing biodiversity loss all around the planet. The causes are habitat loss, invasive species, climate change. We also have over-harvesting and then finally pollution are all impacting biodiversity. And so it's led to conservation. What do we do first? We have to figure out where that biodiversity is being lost. We have to figure out the conservation status of these organisms or areas. And then finally, we can pass laws and treaties to try to uh, preserve a lot of that biodiversity. And so again, why do we need biodiversity? It's where we get our food. It's how we filter our water, energy, medicine. We all get that from our environment. And again, our environment also does these ecosystem services. They keep our climate stable, um, they decompose material once it's died, they pollinate our crops, and so we need biodiversity on, on our planet for resources and to do these services. If we define what it is, it's simply a variety. Variety at the genetic level, at the species level, and at the ecosystems. And so those genes that organisms have, once the organism is gone or the gene is gone, it's gone forever. It's extinct. Um, species as well. These are all the fruits found in a certain area of the tropical rainforest, but also we're talking about about the crops that we have. And so I think it used to be we had around 8,000 different types of apples that were being grown, and now it's 100. And if you look in your own supermarket, it's way less than that. And then it's ecosystem changes as well. Once an ecosystem is gone, coral reefs, for example, you can't build that back again. And so what is causing this biodiversity loss? Well, when I was trying to come up with a quick way for you to remember these five things, I came up with this mnemonic. And so if you think of the biodiversity cop, and if you think of high cop as a way to remember it. If we put those in order, uh, habitat loss is the first big impact on biodiversity. So deforestation, when we're cutting down uh, those rainforests and planting crops. Right here we're growing soybeans. This is looking from above where we used to have a tropical rainforest. We're reducing that diversity and we're replacing it with one simple crop. Invasive species, this is kudzu. It's a plant that was brought from Asia. These are the zebra mussels in the Great Lakes that they're really wreaking havoc. They came uh, from the Mediterranean. We're also seeing climate change uh, impacting biodiversity. So if we look at the polar bear, for example, example, will they go extinct? It's hard to tell. But if we look at all the areas where they used to do well, we're seeing a decrease in the optimal uh, polar bear habitat. Also or over harvesting. Humans have been harvesting animals for a long period of time. The dodo is extinct because we killed all of the dodos. And we're also seeing over harvesting now, especially in our aquatic systems. And then we can have pollution. Pollution's impacting the environment as well. So if we look at that deep water horizon explosion, um, that led to an oil spill, which is impacting biodiversity diversity in the Gulf of Mexico, and it'll take us years to figure out how that impacts it. Now, this has been going on for a long period of time. Extinctions are a part of nature. And if we look back through the fossil record, we've seen five major mass extinctions over time, and they have different causes. But most scientists are pointing to right now as the sixth mass extinction. This is mass extinction caused by humans. We're seeing extinction rates that we've never seen before, biodiversity loss that we've never seen before, and its, and its cause is us. Um, and so how do we solve this problem? Well, the first step is to identify where the problem is. And so the IUCN, International Union for the Conservation of Nature, has been around for over a half a century. And what they've done is come up with these different statuses. Um, extinct, 
Extinct in the wild would be one where we maybe have them in a zoo, but they don't exist in the wild. Then we have critically endangered, endangered, and vulnerable. Then we have um, near threatened, and finally areas of least concern. And so if you go on Wikipedia, you can look up any animal or any plant, and it's going to tell you its conservation status. So for example, the whooping crane are in endangered. Um, the California condor is critically endangered. Humans, you can imagine, are an area of least concern. Um, they've then created this red list where we look at how many of these species fall into these threatened or these red categories. If we look at mammals, almost 20% or over 20% are in this threatened kind of an area, and amphibians are really at risk. And so what do we do? Well, what we can do is pass laws. So in the U.S., we passed the Endangered Species Act in 1973 to protect species and the ecosystems on which they depend. And so it essentially is a list. Uh, so bald eagles are a classic example that were added to the endangered species list. And so there, I think we're around 500 uh, breeding pairs in the lower 48, and now there's over 10,000. So once they recover, we remove them from that list. Um, grizzly bears were added, their population is coming back. In Montana, there's a big debate right now over, do we remove them from the list or, or not? But it also has to be balanced with human um, resources as well. So logging, for example, can impact certain uh, species that are going to be found on the endangered species list. We've also seen global changes. The Convention on Biological Diversity in 1992, all of the green countries here signed on that biodiversity is important, it has an economic import, and that we're going to try to protect it. But again, it's not legally binding. And so we're still seeing huge decreases in biodiversity. And it goes back to the first thing I talked about in this class, the idea that the planet supports society, but society is driven by economics. And so we're never going to see decreases in biodiversity loss until there's an economic incentive or a way to do that. And so did you learn the following? Could you pause the video at this point? and fill in the blanks. Well, let me do that for you. Biodiversity has value. It's a variety in the genes, species, and ecosystems. Again, especially the domestic ones that we need to survive. That loss is caused by high COP. Uh, so that's habitat loss, invasive species, climate change, overharvesting, and pollution. And then how do we solve this? Through conservation, we figure out the status of those organisms or maybe those ecosystems, and then we start to protect them through laws and treaties. So that's it. And it's also the last of the videos on AP Environmental Sciences. So I hope that was helpful.